Hey guys, today I'm sharing the three things that surprised me the most about being a structural engineer. They are how often you end up designing the same thing over again, how much non-structural stuff influences structure, and how messy the design process can be. In school, you get an assignment, you do it, then you hand it in and you forget it ever happened. Work is not like that. The second thing that surprised me was how much non-structural stuff influences structure. I had assumed that design was all about supporting this building in the most structurally efficient way possible. But it's actually more about trying to accommodate a whole bunch of other things while also still trying to be efficient. That means that what I want to do from a purely structural point of view is often not what ends up happening. To me, it seems like it's usually the same three non-structural things that I have to watch out for. These are the impact of other disciplines like electrical and mechanical, constructability, and architecture. The amount of consideration that mechanical and electrical needs can vary quite a bit, depending on your project. Sometimes you can almost ignore them. Other times, not so much. When you first start working, it can feel like you're at a restaurant and you keep trying to order things that aren't on the menu. You can't always get the exact size or shape of something that your calculator tells you you want. This could be for a bunch of reasons. Maybe it's not a standard size, it's too big to ship, or it's just not common in your market. The last non-structural thing to look out for is architecture. And I'm not talking about the overall shape of the building. I mean the little things. Like fitting your columns within walls keeping your joists shallower than your ceiling space, and limiting your deflections because the architect wants to use a fancy floor finish. Anyway, I've learned that a lot of things that a purely structural optimization doesn't care about are actually really important. The third thing that surprised me was how messy the design process can be. From the first two surprises, redesign and the impact of non-structural things, you may have guessed that coordination can be a challenge. If all the disciplines don't communicate properly, things can get very messy very quickly. There's nothing like finding out the roof needs solar panels, a skylight, and a mechanical unit after it's been designed. Other than coordination, I think there are three other big issues that make projects messy. Construction issues, budget, and design. Construction issues could mean that something isn't built right, or you design something that isn't buildable. In both cases, you're designing fixes on the fly, which is not fun. Budget issues are also messy. Money is always tight. This adds stress and can lead to project changes mid-design or even mid-construction in order to find cost savings. Money stress can come from lots of places. A low design fee means that you have to be efficient with your time. Otherwise, your company may not make money from the job. And cost overruns are always a possibility. The third messy thing is design itself. 
Designers are only human, and designing a structure is complicated. So even in a perfect world with the perfect architect, the perfect client, and the perfect budget, I'm sure I could still find a way to overcomplicate my own life. You may have noticed that the three things that surprised me are all kind of negative. This may get you to ask, well, if it's so bad, why are you still doing it? Well, two reasons. First is that I have bills to pay. Second is that a bumpy road doesn't make a journey less worthwhile. Designing structures is still super cool. And that fact is enough to get me through most tough days.